starting off with Cockroaches by Maori Yambo, a Kenyan poet. Oh gosh. And last night I did stamp on a cockroach. And I know, I know it was going through the lounge and it was huge. And I knew it was on its way to call its friends. And I'm sorry, Shanna, I didn't pick it up and redistribute it outside. We live in Durban. These things are a pest and I, I squashed it. I did stamp on it and I thought about the poem and I felt bad. And so I went and got toilet paper and I flushed it down the toilet and it is gone. Cockroaches, there they are scurrying. And it's interesting that Mariambo, to make a point about this creature, which obviously, like any creature, has an important role in nature, in the ecosystem, in terms of breaking things down, etc. But in terms of human homes, it's considered a dirty pest that spreads disease, etc. And something that gives people the chills, right? But could have done, could have used, I don't know, spiders, ants, any kind of pest. Why do you think cockroaches was used? Because they're ugly. <laughs> Humans think they're ugly. I'm sure cockro other cockroaches think they are gorgeous. All right. Because 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 we do have that thing. Why else? A lot of people have a, a visceral horror of them. And he took something which, coming from a subtropical country, coming from an equatorial country, Kenya. I mean, in the warm places, we know them, right? They're around and they pests and we want to get rid of them. And it kind of signifies, you gross, dirty house, food left out. It has all, they have all those connotations. Nobody has a positive connotation about a cockroach. Let's face it, particularly if you live in Durban. So he's deliberately taking something that immediately we go, you, we just hear the name and see them, we, right? Get the doom. And then he does this. Turn on the light and helter skelter they scuttle to their dark shelters. Cut them off from their hideouts. Block their many approaches and see cockroaches in hopeless flurry and helpless worry. But who ordained the crash fall of sandals on these shy creatures? Or is it their love? of darkness holds him suspect. What is the effect of the opening sentence? Turn on the light. Yeah? It's an imperative, so it's like an urgent instruction, like an, a quick reaction to seeing the Yes, the imperative is. form of the verb. Turn on the light. It's an instruction. It's sudden. It's almost kind of like that, a prisoner escaping and then bang, the light pops on. It's a sudden jolt. If you're asleep, and the light goes on. It's it's a it's 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 a shock. It's a jolt. It's a sudden illumination with all the connotations of illuminating your mind and noticing things as well. Look at the language. I mean, look at the sound devices. Helter skelter, they scuttle to their dark shelters. Ulta ulta. It's just, it's 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 it is alliteration within the middle of the sentences, but it's kind of a like, an uncomfortable rhythm that's created. It feels chaotic. And with the enjambment as well, it's like this suddenly happens and you can feel the rhythm is all over. Turn on the light and helter skelter, they scuttle to their dark shelters. There is a rhythm with it there, absolutely, but it's awkward. And in a literal context, the speaker describes how the cockroaches flee to their hiding places when the light is shone on them, right? Cut them off from their hideouts. Block their many approaches. Again, this, this uncomfortable rhythm with a sudden block. This word on, on itself by itself. And, and we feel the frenzy that people suddenly jump and scuttle and do this to get rid of these pests. And we see the fact that in this case, that this, this cut them off. Yes, it's the imperative form as well. So it's, it's, it's both instructing somebody to do this, as well as saying, this is what we do. This is what humans do. So not only are we sending them off to their dark shelters, but then we're stopping them, getting into their safe places and see cockroaches in hopeless flurry and helpless worry. Those adjectives, those adverbs, well, adjectives actually, because flurry and worry are, are, are nouns, really start to beg sympathy, hopeless and helpless. He is humanizing these creatures and making us feel sorry for them. 
and also showing us that there's oh, there's no escape. There's no, you know, they, we, they're going to die. But hopeless and helpless are human qualities. Okay, so again, on a superficial, literal interpretation of the poem, the speaker is observing the frantic and helpless movements of the cockroaches when they disturbed. Continuing with the literal, but here's the turn. Who ordained the crash fall of sandals on these shy creatures? What does ordained mean? When do we usually hear the word ordain? So ordain means to allow something to happen, but, but who gets ordained? What human jobs require somebody to be ordained? Do you know? Priests, ministers. That's how they become priests or ministers. They, they, they get ordained. All right. So it feels like almost this, who ordained this? What godlike power said, you, Beverly, can stomp on that cockroach? And strangely enough, I'd never stomp on a gecko, but I stomped on that cockroach. Yes, I did. No, I'd never stomp on a gecko. I'd never stomp on a spider either. Okay, so the speaker questions the authority that has given humans the power to kill and control these people. Features. And there's an implication that it's not the cockroaches uh, th themselves that are the problem, but rather the human's attitude towards them. Or is it their love of darkness holds them suspect? So here the speaker wonders if it's because the co cockroaches prefer darkness and hidden spaces that make them seem suspicious to humans. And this could also be a metaphor for how people are often suspicious of things they don't fully understand or cannot see clearly. And as I said at the beginning, when I realized I had stomped on a cockroach last night, I'm sure they have some important vital role in, in, in the ecosystem. I don't know what it is. They, they munch and they dec um, as decomposers, I'm sure they are important. Do you know what they are? I think it's yeah. something they put nitrogen in the soil that allows like plants to grow and stuff. Well, then dead ones do as well. So that's fine. No, but, uh, but yeah. And I mean, I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling bad about that. Uh, but I don't know cockroach is all over the house. When we moved in to this old house in 2021, there was a cockroach nest here. Don't even, don't, don't even cockroach poo. And they poo has a certain smell. And that, anyway. So on a literal level, the poet is making us question why we treat cockroaches the way we do and maybe make us question but actually why are we why do we think we can be cruel to them and stomp on them and 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 then and makes us think like these are creatures that that feel hopeless and they feel worry and do we really understand them and they're wrong why do we hate them so on another level being a Kenyan writer and looking at his work in the context of his other work and at the time that he was writing, there is definitely a metaphorical deeper meaning to this poem. And it does speak to the disruptive, disorientative effect on Africans with the arrival of the British colonists. In a 2024 context, you could also look at it in terms of the refugee crisis as they call it in Britain and Europe, and how people who have been, who have fled their homes and are now just stuck. But let's look at it in the, in the African context and what happened when the British colonists arrived. Because in this poem, they scuttle to their dark shelters. The implication here is that their shelters are here. You switch the lights on, they're just like in their place. It's not this, it's not that the that the cockroach has invaded and now has to find out a highlight because it's their shelters, their hideouts. So the disruptive, disorienting effect when the British colonists arrived. And okay, what the heck? And Sansa too captures the aggression of the colonial law the laws that they just bring and, and allow the, the colonists to, to, to take the land, forcibly relocate entire tribes to different regions and then cut them off. I mean, he's not a South African poet, but think about what happened in South Africa in the 60s with the forcible removals and the dorm passes and everything restricting people's movement. In the 1700s, 1800s, that was happening all over Africa. And it's like, no, sorry, you can't live here anymore. There's going to be a mine or a farm or whatever else. People were moved to different regions, cutting them off from their ancestral countries, blocking their escape routes, you know, with no knowledge of 
any kind of tribal war or whatever, people were just being relocated into places where they were then left with people who might have looked like them to the colonists, but were sworn enemies. And when we see Sansa three, hopeless flurry and helpless worry, the violent brutality that 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 the thoughtlessness that happened with the with with the colonists, and we start to query. Who or what gave them the authority, made them feel they had the authority to, to mint and murder indigenous citizens in the inhumane manner in which they did? America was, was even worse. We're not talking about America today, though. Look at the final stanza. Is it their love of darkness holds them suspect? I mean, this is a chilling reference to, to, to racism, even worse, even race, race, racial chauvinism which means that people of, of color and black people are, are lesser beings. Their perceptions as, of Africans as inferior and subhuman. And it's, it's a biting, scathing indictment on the colonial attitude to, to native Africans in Africa and how they were treated. And in this poem, the blame is very, very, very obviously cast on the wearer of the sandal and whoever ordained that. And the sympathy is with the cockroaches. Okay, so here we go. You have some questionies. Group one, let's hear your answer. Critically discuss the way in which the poet has effectively used enjambment to establish tone in stanzas one and two. We said that the enjambment in stanza one and two emphasizes the chaotic and continuous movement of the cockroaches and also the unrelenting attacks on them, which contributes to the sense of, an, to the sense of anxiety and captures yes. the urgency of the cockroaches fleeing. Beautiful. Good. To be a hundred percent certain, say the anxious tone, literally, you know, make it easier for your marker to give you that mark. Number two, let's hear group two. To what extent is the use of rhetorical questions a suitable choice in shaping your understanding of the poem as a whole? To what extent is the use of rhetorical questions a suitable choice in shaping your understanding of the poem as a whole? Now, if you see something where they say, to what extent has this or this or that? whether it's a metaphor, a rhetorical question, whatever, they also, for one point, want you to tell them that you know what a rhetorical question is, hey? Okay, so who answered it? Where are the rhetorical questions at the end? Let's hear group two. Okay, so we basically said it allows for us to think and reflect on what has been said in the poem and really reflect on the message of oh, the question makes us question ourselves and the way that the cockroach and the African people have been treated and and by the question, but who ordained the crash fall of sandals on these shy creatures? It's basically asking us how the colonialists can get away with the violence. And it makes us think about how we like. Complicit in it. Okay, good. So I like, okay, so a great, I'm so glad that, that you answered it like that because up until you said who ordained the crash fall of sandals on these shy creatures and it makes us think about the colonialists, you would have got no points. Even though me as a marker, listening to you, I'm going, yes, she, she absolutely understands and she gets it. But in your answer, you could have been talking about any rhetorical question in any poem because any rhetorical question makes us question things and wonder about ourselves in context of the meaning of the poem right? So that's where so many students who actually know it lose their marks. And if your teachers ever said to you, be specific, right? What they mean is you have to point it out. You have to assume that your examiner is as thick as a brick and thinks that you haven't read the poem. So you have to say specifically the rhetorical questions in stanzas three and four or whatever stanzas they are. And the last two stanzas, already they know well, the last two stanzas pose a rhetorical question. Oh, good. Tickety tick. The student knows what a rhetorical question is. Okay. Make the reader question if they are European, their attitude towards not only cockroaches, but also 
towards Black Africans. In the last stanza, the rhetorical question makes the reader question the, the European or the colonial racist attitude that a lack of understanding and purely based on their race and the darkness of their skin, people are suspicious of. This poem also works on a third level, on a kind of like a meta-conscious level. So yes, on the one level, it's about cockroaches and like, they're shy creatures. This, that, that always jumps out at me, these shy creatures. Okay, they're not, they're not skittering off to their, their hideouts because they're plotting your downfall, although that's debatable. <laughs> no, but they're not. They, they're shy. That's why they're zipping away, right? So it does make us think about how we treat things that we view as pests for whatever reasons. It also asks the colonial question and the racist question. It also, on another level, makes us question our attitude, our fear and aggression response as humans to things we do not understand. Our fear of the unknown. I mean, think about any movie that has any aliens coming to Earth. It's the first thing that happens. It's like, you know, the, the, the American army is rallied to go shoot them. That's the assumption. Humans, and this, this poem also talks about that universal human condition. Question three, in what way has diction been used effectively to reveal the positioning of cockroaches in this poem? So let's just talk about the question itself. Diction refers to the choice of words. And positioning of cockroaches in this poem. So, so that's a tricky word, which, which sometimes people battle to understand the question. How does it position the reader? Or how is Othello positioned or whatever? Basically, it means how are they seen in relation to the other characters and to ourselves, society, everything else? Okay, so let's have an answer from somebody in group three. Okay, so what we said was um, cockroaches are positioned to be viewed as humanly sympathetic victims as opposed to the people as, wielding as, as the humanly sandals. What? Sorry. Sorry. Humanly <laughs> sympathetic victims as opposed to the oppressive people who hold the sandals through the diction in the poem. Words such as hopeless and helpless both lack in the cockroaches to humans, but also hopeless implies a desperate and distraught feeling, and helpless implies a scared and powerless feeling in the cockroaches. Good. And then also shy. Yeah. Shy creatures. Yes, great. So they positioned as being human and victim and blameless. Yeah. Sentient beings, they humanize, they personified, blameless victims. Great. And words like helpless, hopeless, and shy. Perfect. Any other questions on cockroaches? Do you want to see the picture again? Please click subscribe. It's free. And for more content in this section, click on the playlist.